All right, this will be part one of two in the proof of the derivative of the sine function. To find the derivative of sine of x, we're going to start with the definition of derivative. So that's what we have there. We have our, first of all, f of x is, of course, sine of x. And this is our definition of derivative, the x plus h form uh, with sine of x plugged into that. So we have sine of x plus h minus sine of x all over h, and we're taking the limit as h approaches 0. We're going to rearrange that, and the first thing we're going to do is use this trig identity. Okay, this is a pretty basic trig identity, one of uh, your standard ones that can be proven, and I'll kind of assume that you have done that, and if you haven't seen that proof or haven't done that proof, you can look it up yourself. Um, so you can see the color coding here. Uh, we have something, our, our definition of derivative above is in the form of, you know, sine of something minus sine of something else. So um, the first term, sine of u, the u is red as the um, x plus h is red in the definition, and the v is red as the x is red here. And you'll see the red um, u's plug into the... Um, what, what we're going to change our definition into um, in two places, and the V's plug in in two places. So hopefully the red and blue kind of help you see that. The red plug in here, and the blues plug in here. So we get our, our function becomes the limit as h approaches 0 of 2 cosine of u plus v, which becomes x plus h plus x divided by 2, times sine of x plus h minus x um, all over 2, <clears throat> uh, over 2, and then everything is all over h, and then you're taking the limit of that whole big quotient, okay? Well, um, we have x plus x, in the, inside the cosine argument, you have x plus x, right, which is 2x, divided by 2 becomes just plain x, right? And then we have h over 2, which comes down right there. Okay. In the side of the sign, we have x minus x, right? So the x's just go away, and we're just left with h over 2, right? So that's what we have there. Okay. Um, in the next step, we basically, we don't really change anything. We just rearrange a little bit. Since the whole numerator of this fraction is one nice big product, um, we can multiply and, in any order we want and, and divide, really, in any order we want. So we're going to take the h and associate it with the sine, right? We're going to divide sine by h. And we're also going to take this 2 and put it over in front of the sine as well. So that's what you see here. The 2 and the h are right there with the sine. And we're taking the limit of a product. So the limit, we kind of split the limit up into the product. And what happens is the cosine comes over here all by itself with that x plus h over 2 inside of it. Okay, so that's... Um, that step, moving along, what, as when we take the limit, as h approaches 0, nothing happens to cosine. Cosine is just cosine. doesn't matter that h is going to 0. Um, so we can kind of take the limit of what's inside the cosine. Nothing happens to x. Uh, x doesn't care what happens to h. But h approaches 0, right? So that approaches 0. And, of course, 0 over 2 is 0. And so what we're left with there on the left is just cosine of x. Which is great, because um, if you're familiar with the sine function for calculus, um, and in class we've, we've already looked at this, and we, we've kind of been using the idea that derivative of sine is cosine, and that's what we have here. So that's great. What we need is for this to be equal to 1. Okay, so we're going to examine that real briefly here, not necessarily prove it, um, using uh, our calculators. So I've brought up my TI-83 here. And basically what I'm hoping is that this piece of our puzzle here, oh, that's not going to work. I'll bring it back in a second. What we're hoping is that this piece of our puzzle equals 1, obviously, so that um, we can just have cosine when we're done. Um, and I'm going to rewrite it. Instead of h over 2, really we can just let h over 2 equal any other variable. So I'm going to rewrite it as the limit as, h, uh, as x approaches 0 of sine of x over x. And if this equals 1, then uh, our sine of h over 2 
over h over 2 is also 1. Um, because they're, these are really the same form. They're equivalent um, functions. Okay, so here's my, here's my calculator. And I'm going to plug in sine of x over x. So y equals, and I'm going to look at sine of x divided by x. Um, and let's see, we'll just start with the standard zoom. And you can see it in there. We can, we, we can zoom in a little bit. How about zoom in right at the center? And there we go. And we see that as x approaches um, 0, the function approaches 1, which is exactly what we want. And we can trace really close to 0, like 0 0.001. Okay? And the function gets close to 1. And we, it's the same from the negative direction as well. Okay? So that kind of tells us that, that what we're on the right track, that we're doing the right thing. What we have to do is prove this. Um, and so I'm going to do that in part two of this video. See you then.